Hey folks, it's John with K2Tropicals.com, bringing you the next video in the series all about this Fluval M60 complete saltwater setup. If you recall, about a month ago, I did the first video showing you everything that comes with the package. And we put the stand together, we got it all ready. If you missed that video, I'll put it right here. You can click on this box and it'll take you straight to it. Uh, take a look at that. You'll see everything that's included in this package. But today, I want to dive a little deeper into that and actually open up all the small boxes and show you everything that comes with the system and then put it all together. It's very simple to do. I mean, I'm a pretty handy guy, so it takes a lot to confuse me when it comes to this kind of stuff. But I think really anybody can do it. It does come with instruction manuals. They're not the greatest, I'm going to be honest with you, but it does get the point across of what you need to do to get this thing put together and to get it to where I have it right now, which is ready for water. I mean, it's ready to go. So take a look at that. We'll unbox all of the small little components that came with this. Then we'll put the whole thing together. Then we'll come back and I will tell you what my next plans are as far as moving forward with this tank. All right, so here we are. We're going to just start with a quick unboxing of the, the small components that come with this set. I'm not a huge fan of unboxing videos, but I promised the people at Fluval that I would show absolutely everything that came with this set. So here we go. Starting off with the circulation pump, literally only one thing in the box. Nice little circulation pump. I've used Fluval's pumps before, so they work well. Uh, I've got no worries about that. This next box is like a little goodie box. We've got the sump pump in there, and then a couple of bags of little fittings and goodies for getting all of the plumbing situated, and uh, the return and the sump and the drain on the bottom and, and all of that is all on there. So, And then we have just a little user's manual for the sump pump. So next we're gonna move on to the protein skimmer. This is the Fluval PS1 protein skimmer. Um, I've had a lot of people give me a lot of great information about what a protein skimmer is going into this. I literally had no clue what a protein skimmer even did. So thank you to all the people that have sent in comments and things like that letting me know what it is. Uh, it's a very simple device to put together, uh, wrapped in that nice little foam. Uh, there was some tape down at the bottom. I did have to take the unit apart, uh, which I didn't do on camera to get the tape off the, the motor on the bottom. I think it might have been just a piece of tape that fell in there, but uh, you know, I had to get it off. So this is the collection box that all of the yucky stuff that the protein skimmer collects will collect into. And then a goodie box with the bracket to hang it on the back along with the suction cups and the valve and the little uh, adjustment ring that I'll put on in a little bit and you'll see. The light is uh, it's literally, it's it's a light in a box. I mean, this is why I don't do unboxing videos, because there really just isn't a whole lot to see in there. Uh, it does come with a little instruction manual and a light that is very well packaged. It takes a while. The, the packaging was definitely fighting me to get it out of there. Very long cord, uh, which is good, because a lot of times, you know, you, you can plug your light in halfway across the room because all your plugs are already full from all your other stuff. So it has a nice long cord on it. Uh, and I did verify that this is the light that if you were to accidentally drop it in the water, you're not going to blow up your house or anything like that. So that is definitely good to know. So let's move on now to installing these things. First thing is the return. You saw I showed very quickly the Teflon tape that I put on these joints just to avoid leaks. And the instructions actually do recommend that you do that. So use Teflon tape on the threads and getting it on there. I'm kind of, in fast forward you can't tell, but I'm kind of being a little gentle with it because the back wall of this is, it's a, it's kind of thin and I was a little bit nervous about cracking it, trying to, you know, really crank on that, that pipe there. So um, this is the strainer for the bottom drain that uh, I'll show you. Well, I won't really show you, but we'll be putting it in in a little bit uh, when we turn this around on the front. Um, and then we have the sump pump. Everything is just pressure fit. You don't have to worry about any kind of pipe fittings or connectors or anything like that. Uh, very simple to do. And as you can see on this, I have not used a single tool to do this. So very simple. You don't need any special skills. Um, I'm a pretty handy guy, but you don't need to be to be able to do this kind of thing. So that's that. I mean, the sump is literally done. It's ready to go. 
uh, it's just ready for water. So now we will move on to placement of the protein skimmer, which is going to go right into the little cavity there on the right. And I used the bracket and the suction cups because I thought maybe with that motor in there, maybe there might be a little bit of vibration and the suction cups will help that out a lot. Um, and we'll put the little ring onto the collection cup. We're going to get there in a second. There it is. This little uh, rubber ring goes around and you will adjust that to adjust the height of the collection cup. And I don't know why you would do that, but I will learn because hopefully you will tell me. So now uh, I don't think I'm going to do anything else here on the back. Uh, oh, yeah, I am going to put the lid on. There is the lid that covers the section. Uh, everything from the protein skimmer over is covered by that little lid. So this is the valve that goes on the bottom, which is a very nice little feature on this setup where you can actually perform water changes without, you know, draining your display tank. This valve connects to the back cavity of this, the sump, basically. And you can open that valve, drain the tank into a bucket uh, underneath the tank and it'll never affect the water in the actual front display tank and this is really nice because then you don't have to worry about stressing out your fish or stressing out your corals if you if you go that route so now we're installing the circulation pump I do have it kind of pointing in the same direction as the return I don't know if I'm gonna keep it that way but for demonstration purposes I'm just putting it on right there that's you know where it looks good so and I think actually in the um, in the in the box when you look at the box that's where it is too so I was kind of following along with the picture there so now is installation of the light couldn't be simpler you put the light on there you plug it in and it's done I mean there's nothing complicated about that at all so there we are there is the light in all of its glory now wanted to show you the substrate what I did to clean the substrate out uh, I basically stuck a hose in there and just kept it running for probably a good 10 minutes or so and this is what I was left with now I did go in every couple of minutes and I would you know work it around stir it up real good to get all of that nasty stuff out of there this was not live sand so I, I know better than to do that this was just regular crushed coral um, you know kind of a rough crushed coral and it definitely needed to be cleaned so just dumping a little bit of it in there to kind of soften the blow and then I'm going to take the bucket and just dump the rest out there. I probably put about 16 pounds or so in here. Uh, every salt water tank I ever see has a large amount of substrate. So I figured we were going to be okay with doing that. So now we're going to get into the placement of the rocks. These are rocks that I did not go out and buy. They're rocks that I have just collected over the years, whether it was buying a used tank and the rocks were in there or somebody you know bringing them into the shop or whatever just being as involved in fish keeping as I've been for the last 22 years I've just collected these rocks I don't even know where they came from so we had them all in a in a huge tote and I just kind of went through and picked out the best ones and and now here we are no real science behind placement of them I'm just kind of putting them in there and I kind of got lucky because, uh, you know, it only really took me a few minutes. What you see on here is exactly, you know, the whole process. I mean, I, I didn't have to spend hours and hours designing it. I'm not, I'm not one of those people. Not if you are, I'm not against it. But this is just something I did really quick, and I got lucky. I liked the way it looked. I didn't have to spend all day trying to figure out how to do it. I mean, it's a 24-gallon tank, so how long are you going to take to to really do this? So what I was looking for was just kind of that generic standard arch going across the back you see that in a lot of tanks and I really like that look so that's what I went for here and uh, and I was able to accomplish that pretty quick first try so and I have not moved a single rock since then so I'm happy with it and this is gonna be the way it stays so that's how we got to where we are today So there you have it. That's how we got to where we are right now. Now, obviously, there's a couple of things that are missing from this tank, one being water and the other being, well, anything else. So wanted to talk about my plan moving forward. Now, first thing I've done, I have one of those 35-gallon Rubbermaid trash cans. Lisa and I used to use it at the shop for doing water changes and wheeling it around and stuff like that. 
it's actually been very dirty, so I cleaned it out really good. I'm going to use that to mix up my salt water for this tank. So I'm going to get that ready, get it salty. I don't know if that's what you call it and get it ready to use in this tank, you know, treat it. I'm gonna use my regular old tap water because I don't have access to RO water right now. The closest pet shop to me that sells salt water is about two hours away. So not gonna do that. And so I'm gonna mix this up. I'm gonna use my tap water. I'm gonna dechlorinate it. I'm gonna use the water conditioner that Fluval provided me and then put the salt in it and get it going and get it ready to put in here. So that's the next step. I'm not gonna show that on video because I don't think there really is any reason to. I will tell you though in the next video what I did exactly to get it to that point, to get it ready to go into this tank. And then the next big thing is gonna be inhabitants of this tank. We're not still 100% sure what that's gonna be yet. If you saw my video that I put up on Monday, my new freestyle video, I don't know what to call that video yet, maybe you can help me, but if you saw in that one, I'd said that Lisa is very much partial to Clowns. And so we might go with clowns. Uh, I would love to put maybe a couple of shrimp or something in there. I don't know. It's a 24 gallon tank. So it's not like we can go get lionfish and, and you know, these big giant fish and stuff like that. We're going to have to stay small, but that's okay because I really like the idea of starting small for our first tank. So I think we're probably going to go with some clownfish, but I'm going to have to do my research on those before we commit to buying a bunch of those. Now I've seen a lot of tanks, including some in Chicago, where I met the guy that got me this tank. I saw tanks full of clowns, like 40 clowns in there. So I think you can put a bunch of them together, but maybe that could be something that you help me with. Educate me a little bit on clowns, whether I should or should not deal with them. I have heard that they're aggressive, but I got my start on YouTube talking about African cichlids. I know how to deal with aggression. I can handle that. But anyway, I don't know exactly what we're going to go with. We're going to start with fish. That way, if I struggle in the beginning with doing this whole saltwater thing, I'm not killing a bunch of expensive corals. Now, I want to mention one thing. I did mention in my video on Monday that I was walking through Petco and saw a couple of cool coils. Coils. Corals. I've been thinking about vaping too much. Corals. I wasn't insinuating that I'm going to buy my corals from Petco. I'm just saying I was walking through there. I bought this substrate there. I was walking through there and saw a couple of cool corals. That's hard to say. And so I probably will end up getting some down the road. I'm not, I'm not going to buy them at Petco. I mean, I'll, I don't know where I'll buy them, but I probably will get a small coral here or there and start adding them as I go as I learn more about keeping the water. But I want to get some inexpensive fish to start out with and learn what I'm doing with this stuff so that I don't just completely sacrifice a bunch of corals. So I don't have money to just throw out and kill a bunch of stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. But I would love to hear from you. What is a good idea for some small saltwater fish that we can put in here? I'd like some activity in it. I, I don't need you know, I don't want just one fish. I'd like to have a, a pretty good assortment of fish, small, that can fit in a 24 gallon and that I'm not gonna feel like I'm being mean to them. What can I put in there? You please let me know. And if you don't know, ask your saltwater friends, tell them to come watch this video and have them tell me what I can put in this tank. That would be a huge help. I'd love to get your input on this. I've had so much really good information shared with me in the comment section of my past videos, as well as emails being sent to me. Hey, John, think about this, do this. It's been wonderful, the amount of support that I've gotten on that. So, and hey, if you wanna connect with me directly, go over to the KG Tropicals Tank Talk Facebook group and join there. And you can get me, we can instant message on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. You can tell me everything I need to know about what fish I should put in this tank. So. Give me about a week or so, maybe two weeks, and I will have this thing running with salt water in it, and we'll be ready, hopefully at that point, uh, to start talking about what kind of fish to get. I'm, I'm not gonna put fish in here two weeks from now. I'm gonna cycle it and do the whole thing, but once we're ready, maybe I'll take you with me to the pet store to buy my first couple of salt water fish. I think that'll be fun. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. If you're thinking about getting this system and you didn't see my video that I did about a month ago, check it out. 
Uh, we'll put the link in the description or just go back a little bit in the video and click the annotation. Either way, check that video out. It gives you a really good idea of everything that comes with this system. So hope you got something out of this. I want to thank you again for watching. I'm burning out here. I'm running out of steam. So it's time to sign off. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.